So I had a nice gentleman by the name of John Mullins offered to donate some brass ingots. Now he's got a foundry. Uh, you can see his Etsy shop in the comments. Um, anyway, he contacted me and said, hey, I want to donate some some of these brass ingots. We're trying to make look like golden nuggets. And I guess he'd seen some of my crazy projects and thought this guy could maybe try something with it. So, you saw my diagram there. I thought, why don't we do some kind of a golden river flowing thing? Kind of a nod to the gold rush days. I can only imagine these guys trying to make it rich. Imagine the rivers were just loaded with gold nuggets. So, that's where this idea came from. I had a big chunk of elm wood that was obviously very green. Um, went to town on it to see what could happen. I, I'm i kind of digging the cracked look filled with resin. Uh, I know full well this green stuff's gonna crack like crazy and not only is it what I have access to right now, but um, kind of kind of liking this cracked look as you'll see this thing. It took me forever to finish this project and as I sat there on my lathe it um, went crazy with the fissuring and cracking down the middle, which turned out pretty cool, I think. I think I'm gonna rename the um, channel here, Dan's Amateur Hour. I got basic wood turning down, but man, some of this resin stuff, it's kicking my butt. Total Boat has been kind enough to sponsor uh, my channel as far as providing free resin um, and this last round they provided some of this deep set resin so I thought I'd do some experimenting to see how clear it would be without any uh, pressure pot or anything like that and you'll see down this road that I was very poorly informed about how air escapes from wood <laughs> So we'll see some disappointing outcomes here, but in the end it was it was kind of cool. I started using these Forstner bits a little more. Saves a lot of time, usually. I don't know what the deal is. This thing's brand new, and you can see it's smoking here, but I could not get this to go. I'm not gonna admit to you how long it took me to core the center of this thing out, but I don't know if it was the grain orientation or what, but this thing took forever. I'm not sure it saved me much time in the end, but maybe it saved my back. A uh, bunch of different wood turning folks, painters, jewelers, um, have come together to form this website, artforour.org. Um, I've been supporting Operation Underground Railroad for a long time now. Well, I shouldn't say a long time, about a year now. And we're all coming together on this website, donating our projects and selling it. And you can read on the website some are donating 100% of the profits to OUR, some down to 50%. Some of the projects are kind of expensive to make. I know one guy makes a, his stuff out of silver and that's not cheap. Um, but at least 50% of the profits go to OUR. So if you are an artist of any kind, if you work with leather, wood, stained glass, painting, doesn't really matter. Uh, we've got some really high-end stuff. We've got some uh, more simple things. Um, we would love to have you donate something uh, once or twice or once a year. Or if you're just doing your shopping for Christmas or birthdays, come take a look. Um, the more the merrier, obviously. We'd love to have your support. 
if you are interested in donating, there's um, a link on the website that says donate what you create. And all you have to do is fill out the form, submit some pictures. You actually hold on to your product, and if it sells, we let you know. You ship it directly to the buyer. Uh, we make a donation to OUR, and, and that's that. We're trying not to get a warehouse full of people's stuff. We don't want to damage anything or pay for shipping twice, so that's the, what, the way we're rolling. And so far, so good. We've only been at it for a few weeks now, and we're nearing raising about a thousand bucks, so it's coming along. It takes some time, of course but we've been extremely blessed with people donating stuff. We're nearing about 30 different creators have donated their projects and been extremely grateful for their generosity. Bought a new tool system. It's by WeCheer. <clears throat> it's a um, carving system. Um, you can do a lot of different rotary attachments <clears throat> like the rotor zip I'm using here. Um, I've liked it. I found it in a hurry though that um, what you can and cannot do with a wee chair rotary tool on that is you cannot jam it in the corner. <laughs> I, I broke the, tape, the cable on it and it wasn't because it was poorly made. It's because I did some really stupid things with it and manhandled it. And now I know what you can and can't do and I really like it. it. You'll see me use it here in a minute. It helps me get in the really tight corners. Still using a combination of roto zip oscillating saw and, and now the wee chair burrs. What I was going for here was a meandering river. If you've ever flown over a big delta where a river is slowly making itself out to a lake or ocean, kind of just goes in these crazy zigzag patterns. Uh, so that was kind of what I was going for here. If you're unfamiliar with Operation Underground Railroad, um, they do amazing work running around the world doing sting operations, freeing children from, uh, from sex trafficking rings. Uh, to date, they've saved about 4,000 kids. They do their best to find better homes for them, whether that's through adoption or finding their, their, their original homes, if they're safe to go back to and so on. From start to beginning, they from start to end, they tend to take very good care of these kids and do the best they can to prevent them from getting back in the system. It's an awesome organization. There's hundreds of thousands of volunteers around the world uh, raising millions and millions of dollars to make this work, and they, they're doing awesome work. One of the easiest things you can do to support them uh, is click on any of the links in the description, the Amazon links. And even if you're not trying to buy that specific item, if you do your regular Amazon shopping through those links, um, I donate all of the proceeds I get from that. It's about 5% of every purchase goes comes to me. I don't keep anything. It goes right to, to OUR. I don't keep anything even for my overhead. For me, this is a hobby that's um, turned into a charity thing and it's been sponsored and I couldn't be happier. So if you want to get involved, do that. Now in full honesty here, I cut out a whole segment where I could not figure out <clears throat> how to get these dang brass, quote unquote, gold nuggets to stay in the, in, in the grooves I made. I made an attempt at doing a ton of hot glue and it turns out it's so opaque it didn't look very good, so I tore that out. Um, in the process I had squirted some WD-40 in there so it wouldn't stick, <clears throat> which made it worse. Um, so I had to burn it out with the uh, torch, which is why I get that nice cooked look. Eventually I, did, I settled on hot glue, just little bits at a time, sticking each one together, and actually worked out really well. Um, formed kind of this lattice work 
Um, took a while. Had a couple of decent burns, but I couldn't figure out how to do something that would, to fit, put them together with, in a way that would stick really quickly. Um, I don't have all day to sit here and super glue each piece. So I thought this was a great solution until I filled the whole thing with resin and the heat from the resin setting melted the hot glue. <laughs> so this great lattice work I'd made totally fell apart and my other goal was to keep this thing perfectly in the center of the groove so that when I turned it I wouldn't be hitting any brass with my my gouges and everything and boy that plan fell apart. Turns out that brass isn't that hard and I actually turned through it easier than you would think. Um, and I didn't destroy my tools. I thought I was this whole thing was a total waste, but it worked out fine. The inside was a little hard because I couldn't get the right leverage. Um, so there's a little lumpy in there because of the metal, but outside worked fine. All right, so I took somebody's advice and I put one of those cutting mats on the inside of the bowl, um, sprayed it down with silicone mold release. I thought that was a great idea. I filled a full big plastic bag so that it wouldn't get in the center of it, but somehow the whole thing leaked and I ended up having to cut the whole thing out. Um, other suggestions I, re I received were using tuck tape. You just saw me cover the whole tenon with that. Unfortunately, it didn't work at all. It, this resin stuck to the tuck tape like it didn't even care. Um, so here's the thick set, deep set stuff by Total Boat. Once again, I'd like to thank them for their generosity and supporting my charity work, uh, supporting Operation Under Underground Railroad. So I, unfortunately, I like to take big risks and I, I've been trying to decide what's more important. Pressure pot, the thick set, deep set, epoxy that takes a long time to set so maybe the uh, bubbles would rise uh, and or sealing the wood so on this one I only did the epoxy no sealing the wood no pressure pop I just wanted to see what would happen and big fat surprise um, there's bubbles everywhere so I don't think it was the epoxy's fault because you can see areas of it that are totally clear but you can see bubbles coming straight out of the wood so I'm gonna have to find a way to seal my wood before I do my next one and I'm gonna throw in the pressure pot for good measure. I've had good luck with that in the past. I just just didn't want to do things out of habit. I wanted to understand exactly what was being more effective and I'm thinking it's gonna take all three measures to get myself clear epoxy. One problem I had though right here is the dang cardboard. A little piece of it went right into one of these grooves. <laughs> so. I was going to make just a smooth outer surface and I had to make a deep groove here to get it out and then I thought okay fine let's just make the whole thing wavy. The reason I don't wrap the outside with like saran wrap or um, any kind of flimsy material is it, it pulls across those wider gaps and, and doesn't make a round surface needs something pretty rigid so it doesn't collapse in there. Cardboard works pretty well as long as the dang thing doesn't go into the, the area you're working and I still, I still don't know why one little piece got in there. It's just a big piece I use so mystery. I came back with resin and filled in a bunch of cracks. Again it took me a long time to finish this so that a few more cracks had formed after the resin was done. Usually when I do a project like this knowing it's going to crack I'll get it all finished and treat it heavily with teak oil, but it seems to be very successful at stopping the cracks from, from, from progressing. But I didn't have that chance. It sat on the lathe for like an extra week. Um, I was on call at a hospital and I just didn't have time. So I had to come back and fill in the cracks. One other big issue I had is this river formation, you'll notice it kind of cuts back on itself pretty steeply in a couple places. Some air got stuck underneath those ledges and that created some big bubbles too. I don't know how I would avoid that. 
um, this 3D surface, you know, you can't, I, I envy the guys doing these river tables because it's just flat and easy to handle, but when it's 3D, it doesn't matter what direction you point it, you gotta submerge the whole thing. Turns out those bubbles weren't as big of a deal, but yeah, that's, that's the battle with resin. So yeah, unfortunately a little resin leaked into the plastic bag center, which usually doesn't happen, uh, but it, I don't know how it got in there, but it's it made a mess. And with resin on both sides of the cutting mat, that was a total failure. I don't know, that, that stuff will stick to anything. You do mold release on anything but stainless steel, and I swear, either, either you've got a silicone really flexible mold or a hard stainless steel metal mold otherwise it's sticking and it's going to ruin it so i'm back to the drawing board i've had a few people suggest filling the center with marbles <clears throat> it's a decent idea but if if resin got into those marbles then i've got glass flying everywhere and that's that's too big a risk to take so custom molds <clears throat> I, i'm always making different shapes and i'm not sure we're kind of honing on, in on a better option there but Another challenge is with these big tall vases, so much resin sinks into the wood. Uh, kind of like I mentioned, I kind of embrace this cracked look, and it absorbs resin like crazy. So no matter how much extra resin, how tall I build the column of resin above it, it always seems to sink below the surface where I wanted it. So having to do a second pour, often there were bubbles in there, and I'm pretty busy, so I don't have time to babysit the first pour make sure it doesn't you know blow torch it and all that um, this is not my full-time job so kind of had to live with a ring of bubbles there but it all in all I'm pretty happy with it just about every step of this thing went wrong <laughs> even even the branding I got this was out of focus and you can see that it I got a double imprinted just barely some projects are cursed So you can see all my great lattice work kind of sunk down. The funny thing about this is I was going for an abstract river of gold and if you look really close at it, it looks like how a bunch of gold nuggets would look like in a stream bed in actuality. Bubbles coming up and everything. So I'm going to go with I meant to do that. Not really, but why not? Peak oil seems to be my friend, um, doesn't streak, shines things up really well after a couple of coats, and more importantly, when I'm using this really unstable wood, um, it really stabilizes those cracks, and once you've done two or three coats, it stops cracking almost immediately.
Once again, uh, pay us a visit over at Art for O U R A R T F O R O U R dot org. Buy something, submit a project of yours, make a donation, share it, uh, use our Amazon links to make a purchase. All of that will help the fight against sex trafficking. There's definitely something you can do on that website to help out, even if you don't have much money on hand. <laughs>